Well, good morning. I'm back with you today. Slight day off yesterday. Somewhat Rovers, well, their struggles away from home and the draw meant uh, this was a good result. I wouldn't necessarily have taken them on had they taken the initial lead, as you see there. Dundalk and Derry, nil-nil. Were the in-place stats good enough for you to look at that nil-nil ending? It's all about total stats. 14 goal attempts, only three on, 11 off. Might have tempted you in. Nine corner kicks as well might have tempted you in. But whenever you lay the draw, if you can lay it as late as possible, that will limit your liability if it returns to a nil-nil. Well, good result for Sligo Rovers here against uh, the league leaders, as was Shelburne. Ken Barlow from Coronation Street opening the scoring for Sligo. Boyd equalising. So you could have arguably got a trade out of that. The league leaders equalising after the 58th minute. So that was your ideal trade. And if you cash out there, it doesn't matter what happens afterwards. Don't forget that. As soon as you press the green screen button and you get the green screen, anything that happens after that is irrelevant. So that's the attraction of cashing out early. Could have laid Sligo arguably later on at lower odds in the hope that they could get an equaliser Shelburne, but it was not to be. St. Pat's and Galway, 2.45, the favourite. Very tough, as indeed was that one, to trust the market. 1.78, Cork City. Did the red card impact, or was it a late red card? 70th minute red card. Uh, arguably here, if you fancy Cork City, insurance covering the 1-0, that would get you out of here with a break-even, particularly with that red card in the 70th minute, which would have knocked the stuffing out of your play. But uh, Cork survived, having a good go at it in this uh, first division. Kerry, well, arguably a good result for them. They're not getting battered, at least. But that they are a side to take on. If there was a relegation, they would have been relegated last season. Finn Harps and Wexford, again, no strong angles there. 2.34 the favourite as well. And a nil-nil. So getting very, very quiet in the Irish first division, as you can see there. Looking at the tennis yesterday, and I'm afraid we're still being hit by this rain, which means I don't know when the tennis is going to start. I'm not going to be sitting around all day long waiting for it to start, which is a pity because I'd like to get involved. But we're getting this interrupted all the time. Let's have a look at the matches that, that did occur yesterday. This was a shock. Arnaldi, maybe it's catching up with Rublev, this excellent run he's been having. How do we play this one? Well, the best way to keep your liability low is to wait for Arnaldi to break in the second set. We're talking absolute ideals here, of course. So point by point, set two. Rublev drops his service game. Well, no, he did. So you'd have had a bit of a time to wait. Uh, so if he drops his serve there, no, I'm getting it wrong. I'm looking for him to break serve because we want to get attack him at lower odds. It all depends on what Arnaldi's odds were, but I think I would have been tempted in to have a play here and I would have rued that. Maybe it was an injury concern given uh, the poor percentage of games won in the latter two sets. This is more like it, 103. You've got to lay them at these odds. You saw with her cats went up to 1.55. Sits a pass okay. This one, I hope you'd have picked out. Frenchman in France, odds on favourite, drops the first set. Boom. That's this market it. is now in play. Alcaraz got through his uh, concerning match the time before. Made to uh, really work hard uh, against De Jong. And he's impressive. I would uh, look out for De Jong in the future. He's caught my eye, particularly his ability to pressurise his opponent's serves. That's what got him this late into the tournament. He's one for the future. I spotted Sitsabas, but young. Maybe we, we can look out for that boy. 
as well, De Jong. In the ladies' game, I think I might have been tempted in with this one. Losing to a, in a tiebreaker means it's not an emphatic defeat, but uh, Cocchioretto doing a good job with that second set. So a couple of potential losers if you're just looking at the first set. But apart from that, all the odds on. This market has been deliver. suspended. Let's have a look on to today's football. Let's get it up for you. The big match, of course, is the Champions League final. And as you know, I don't tend to play these high-profile finals uh, for good reason. You saw Atalanta tear Leverkusen apart and you wouldn't have expected that given Leverkusen's season. So I would not be playing. I would enjoy watching it, but I wouldn't necessarily be a player. So let's have a look at Saturday. So that's the Dortmund Real Madrid. I've done the previews for you. The Alsvenskin is on today, and uh, we've got our big guns, Malmo, tend to be ultra reliable. That would be a key match to focus on. Elfsborg, I don't know what to make of them. One week they're odds on favourite, the next week they're beating Malmo, the next week they're losing. Now they're 2.5 to favourite. It's a very tricky market to pick out. I don't like the Super Etten either. Uh, it's not the best league on the planet. It's not the most reliable league on the planet. But do we have any good research? Well, let's have a look at Norway. Bram, I would be expecting Bram to continue their unbeaten run. A uh, ham camp, just two wins, shouldn't really land a blow. Asani and Sanders, two sides at the wrong end of the table, so got trust issues there. Egersund and Ralfus. Egersund quite simply, full of goals, absolute shed loads. And that opens the door up to a potential for a goal before half-time. So if you see a nil-nil after 10 minutes, you might want to look at the goals before half-time. Both teams tend to score in Egerson matches, and they quite simply do a Kevin Keegan outscore their opponent. Konsvinga and Bryn, top three clash. Konsvinga, when they've dropped points, have done so against top half sides. So they might be vulnerable today. Bryn, poor on the road. Only tending to lose 1 0, though. So they've got that 1 0 pattern, Bryn. They do keep sides tight to them, even in defeat. Lavanga and Start. Start gap in form. They get to play any team 6th to 10th, home or away. <clears throat> so we've got no gauge against today's opponents, making it difficult. This is what we see early on in the season. We had these gaps in form. Moss and Arlesund. Early season, but hope form lines ring true. Both teams can score with Moss getting the win. That would be my call here. But 1.9 is relatively high uh, when you're looking at a guaranteed win. Runheim and Valeranga. Runheim have goals in them, but keep scoring in defeat against the top five. And they're playing fourth today. Valeranga keeps scoring two goals against ninth and lower. So on paper, it looks an obvious play for Valeranga with their goals uh, to get something out of this. Runheim, though, have failed to score in only the one match. Sogendal and Stabek. Uh, I didn't know the odds when I was doing the research. So it's a good exercise because uh, if your research marries what the market thinks, you have some confidence. So uh, this conclusion was without knowing it was 2.05 for Sogandar. Close in the betting. <laughs> Expect goals, certainly, with Stabek knocking them in and against the top seven. A goal before half time of both teams to score. Stabek score and concede as well. So spe speculators might want to look. <clears throat> any other home score, any other away score. Uh, so that might be something for you. That's four goals or more for one team. Let's go to the Alsvenskan. Tenth against first. Bromma lost 5-0 at home to second. So Malmo really should be eyeing the win here today. They've scored in every single match. Gotteberg and Elf, too tough for me to call. And Elfsborg... As I say, they're fluctuating in the odds. Uh, they can beat Malmo, then they can lose to Malmo. I don't know what to make of the Elf. They were second last season. Halmstadt and Gaius lay any late draw. Gaius are competitive in defeat away. They have plenty of wins this season. Suggestion to insurance lay Halmstadt if Halmstadt score first. You know what I mean by insurance lay, I hope, by now. To cover that scoreline, to cover that 1-0 by laying over 
one and a half goals. Sirius and Norcopping. Norcopping scoring concede away with just the one win. Dega Falls and Utsikton, both sides are in good form. Dega Falls have not played second to 11th at home. That's a problematic gap in form. Again, we're meeting that gap in form that we saw earlier. Braga and Oster, both teams have trouble scoring that second goal against fellow top sides. So when I see strong under two and a half goal stats like I do uh, with Braga, I tend to back nil-nil pre-match and hope we get a nil-nil at half time. Ostersund and Sandvikens seem to lack the away form to trouble Ostersund. Sandvikens, uh, who could build on two consecutive wins. Landskrona and Trelleborg. Landskrona can continue their solid recent run. Good defensively at home. They've conceded only the one goal at home. Three wins, two against the Trelleborg, yet to play a top seven side away. Uh, they might surprise, so we've got that gap in form again. That's what you tend to see plaguing the early seasons. Tennis-wise, well, I haven't got a clue when it's going to start. As you can see, interrupted means rain, rain, rain. Uh, Algo Elysium, I think, would be gettable as he, his odds creep up and the quality of his opponent creeps up. So I would look, if he's two sets up, Algo Elysium, take him on then. Grigor doing a good job. Hercats, well, no struggles today. I expected Shap Shapovalov to give him a little bit more to think about, but we're on serve in the... Third set, it's a must win for Shapovalov. You might want to look at a play with Shapovalov winning the third set. Remember, Herkats has been dropping sets at least. Medvedev looks a standout. Zverev is uh, putting in some good runs. Uh, Henrik Runa, or I don't know his name, something Runa, Helvig or something. Kasper Rudd, so some very familiar names. Taylor Fritz. My favourite player. It's meeting Tanasi Cock and Arcus, mate. Struth, mate. You might take a set off Taylor Fritz, mate. Yeah, Struth, mate. Where's me strides, mate? Got to stick me ball in me budgie strugglers when I'm doing me serving, mate. Struth. So I'll be looking at Tanasi Cock and Arcus being very competitive today. The reason he's ATP 100, he took a, a big chunk of time out. Now he's back and he's uh, dropping down the rankings. Novak is still vulnerable. You can see his odds are rising sh slightly. Still take him on, I think, uh, particularly if he wins the first set. And the ladies, yeah, I'm not that familiar with the ladies' game, so I uh, tend to look at the rankings 8th against 70th. So we've got an automatic top 10. We've got Rybikina top 4. At least Mertens is no slouch, so that's going to be a competitive affair. I would look at that one. Uh, Sabalenka again, another top 10. World number two, Sabalenka. Uh, so that will be interesting as well. So plenty of world top 10s playing today. Svitolina outside. Bogdan. Madison Keys and Navarro. This could be competitive. Why? Fellow Americans meeting each other and indeed both inside the world top 25. So potential value here would be taking on a Madison Keys first set win. So I'll see you throughout the day today. I'm afraid there's no live stream, as you can tell. Uh, there's a huge gap in the three o'clock, isn't there, today. Uh, but I'll be on hand throughout the day on Telegram. We've only really got the Swedes and the Norwegians to help us out. We've got the Champions League at eight o'clock. It's going to be a fascinating fixture. Dortmund, surprised to see them there, given they were stronger candidates. Uh, but they might surprise just as Atalanta surprised. It's all about tactics when you've got a one-off match. Atalanta's tactics against Leverkusen were just absolutely spot on. Uh, starved Leverkusen of any uh, chance of scoring. So Dortmund, if they get it tactically right, just for a one-off match, they might pull it off. It's a big Champions League match. I don't know what the history is like in these, but you it's instinctually think backing nil-nil pre-match in the hope of a tight one. But uh, this Real Madrid side's forward line is quite superb. If Dortmund had kept Nkunku, they might have a greater chance, but he's gone off to Chelsea, hasn't he? So, as I say, see you throughout the day, and I just hope that the tennis uh, will play ball today, i.e. will kick off at the correct time.
time and I will follow that for you. I do want to get you into the tennis because I do feel over the summer months we've got a whole raft of superb tennis a ATP calendar. This is just the men's version. We've got Wimbledon, we've got the US Open, we've got the French Open now. Uh, we've got high-class events as well because they're all precursors to a Grand Slam. So you're going to be attracting all of the star players. London, Hala, which used to be farmed by Roger Federer. Mallorca, I'd love to go there. Ah, that would be remarkable. That would be Rafa Nadal's tournament. Eastbourne, and we've got the uh, London Grand Slam, Hamburg. And then we're off to the US, Gestatt, Bard, Bastard, excuse my French. And then uh, over the Olympics as well. Blimey, Governor. So that's going to uh, slightly change things a little bit with the Olympics back bang in the middle. And then we've got the US Open Grand Slam. And then we've got Wimbledon Grand Slam as well. And all of these peripheral tournaments are all world-class events, high class as well, ATP 250, ATP 1000, ATP 250, and ATP 500 events. So uh, that's why I want to get you interested in, in the tennis. You can apply football trading principles to tennis if you just swap the word goals for sets. You can get a lot deeper into that as well. As I say with this De Jong, you look at his service stats, his ability to, to harvest 30-30s and pressurise his opponent's serve while winning 40-15 on his. It's the perfect combination, isn't it? So uh, I'll see you throughout the day. My apologies for no live streams. I'd love to get back into the live stream action, uh, but there's not enough matches. So uh, don't worry. As soon as we get back to August... You know what it's going to be like. It's going to be mayhem, August to April. Live stream every weekend. I'm looking forward to that. Have a great Saturday. I'll see you on Telegram throughout.